What if Anakin Skywalker became the Emperor? As Yoda and Palpatine duel, their combined energy explodes, sending them flying across the room. As Yoda flees, Palpatine laughs in triumph as he says, Nothing will be the same after this momentous day. This was true, but not for the reasons Palpatine thought. As Palpatine senses Anakin's danger, Anakin and Obi-Wan are still dueling, and Obi-Wan tries to reason with Anakin, and feels like he's talking to a brick wall. Anakin was impenetrable. I really wish Qui-Gon was here. He would know what to say, Obi-Wan thought. As Obi-Wan jumps out of the lava onto a hill and says, I have the high ground. As without hesitation, Anakin jumps over Obi-Wan, catching him off guard and stabbing him through the back. The speed and power of his jump were like nothing Obi-Wan had ever seen. As right before Obi-Wan dies, he says, Always remember, you are the chosen one, Anakin. As Anakin leaves, he is unshaken by about what he had just done. All he can think about is Padme. As he runs back, he makes sure she is okay, but she was still unconscious. As Palpatine lands, Anakin asks if they can save Padme. Palpatine tries to talk Anakin out of it, saying she will hinder his potential in making their empire weaker. As Anakin sees what Palpatine really wants, he says, Our empire! Igniting his light to him, stabbing Palpatine in the heart, killing him immediately. As the clones around don't know what to do, Anakin begins to choke them, but then he releases them and shouts, Bow before your new emperor. Anakin leaves Mustafar with both of his former masters dead by his hands, but he feels no remorse. As they get back to Coruscant, he tries to kill Padme. He gets all the best droids, and they try their best, doing everything they can possibly do, but she dies anyway. Anakin is destroyed by this, so he puts all of his anger into bleeding his kyber crystal. But when he returns, his twin daughter and son make him feel better, but he feels like a part of himself is missing. So he asks the nearest clone commander to locate Captain Rex for the 501st Clone Battalion, and to get all the best battle strategists and tell them to meet him in his office. As Anakin leaves his kids with all of the droids, and tells a group of the clones to run. Anakin Skywalker calls for a meeting in the Senate and tells everyone what has occurred and tells them he will do everything in his power to help the Galactic Empire grow and that he will threaten anyone who does not agree to follow him, including the bureaucrats of the Senate, Palpatine's friends who were the real power in the Senate, were now bowing to the new Emperor, Emperor Vader. He says he will bring peace by any means possible. As Anakin gets to his office, he finds Ahsoka and Rex there by themselves. Anakin walks in and hugs Ahsoka and Rex, happy to see them alive, but they don't exactly feel the same. Ahsoka feels the dark side of the force around Anakin as she asks, what happened? Obi-Wan and the Jedi turned against me. Don't you turn against me. As Anakin igniting his lightsaber as he turns it off and apologizes. Sorry, it's been a hard day for me. I feel like everyone is trying to kill me. Anakin collapses in his chair, exhausted. I hope you... Ahsoka and you, Rex, can understand why I've done what I've done. For peace, for justice, for love. As he starts crying, as Ahsoka runs up and says, Padme? She died a couple hours ago after giving birth to our twins, my daughter Leia and my son Luke. It's okay, Master. I'll be here for you. As Ahsoka joins him, she was bewildered at what he had done, but tried to forgive him because she knew the real Anakin. But every time she tried to help him, he would never listen. As the rest of the leaders came in, Anakin told them of his plans to control the galaxy and told them of Palpatine's plans and continues then making more clones to use in his grand army and to build a Death Star to make sure all the worlds were in check. As Anakin begins his rampage through the systems, killing anyone and anything that stands in his way, he also found that Palpatine had captured young Force sensitives to train, which Vader put Ahsoka to train them. But she refused to teach them because she didn't want them to kill and only wanted to rebuild the Jedi Order so the world would be safe. But Vader had different plans. So Ahsoka trained them, but Vader personally trained Luke and Leia, using everything he could get his hands on to gain power. Jedi and Sith Holocron, the Jedi Temple, but not just for power, for love. As he desecrates planet after planet in the galaxy, getting more and more power and control until he gets to Mandible. He knew this would be a challenge, a worthy opponent for him. As he lands, he asks to meet with their leader. As Vader gets there, he sees Darth Maul, and immediately filled with rage, I challenge you to a duel. As Maul says, Right into it, you are a fiery one. I accept your request. 
as they both ignite their lightsaber as Vader says, You are weak. You may have been able to kill Qui-Gon, but you will soon find out that I'm much more powerful than him. As Maul charges angrily, their duel begins. It was very fast paced as Vader played with his food. Maul was struggling to keep up with Vader as he easily deflected and attacked Maul. As Vader slices off Maul's hand, but Maul continues to strike Vader, he gets his other hand chopped off as Vader points his lightsaber at him and says, I will spare your life if you join me. What is your will, master? Maul really just wanted revenge on Palpatine and Obi-Wan, but little did he know Vader had killed them. As Vader lifts up the dark saber, all the Mandalorians cheer as Vader makes this his base of operations. With the resources they have and the power of their military force, nothing would be impossible. But Vader still trained his children and wanted more than anything for his wife to come back. As the years pass, Luke and Leia are older and everything was coming to fruition with the Inquisitors and his children. He would have a powerful force of force wielders and his Death Star was built. And the first thing that they did was blast Tatooine, exploding it to billions of pieces. But this was Ahsoka's last straw. As she told Rex she was leaving and that he should go with him. And Rex agrees and they escape in the celebration of this victory. As Ahsoka brings all the younglings with her, but she didn't know where to go. But she was pulled to the planet of Dagobah by a voice, by a feeling, like the force itself was calling to her. Or something of the force close to it, like an old friend maybe. She couldn't explain it, but she was following it nonetheless. And when they arrived, they spent months making a life there. Finding food was hard. They cleared room for a home and a place to practice their communion with the Force. For this place was very strong with the Force, and they could feel it. But one day when Ahsoka was teaching the younglings, she felt a calling. Like the same calling that had brought her to this place, to Dagobah. And really, without hesitation, she followed it. She was afraid, but also felt like she had to follow it and find the secrets of this place. As she follows it, she makes it to a cave, and a little green man is at it. Master Yoda, it's so great to see you again. I wasn't sure if you had made it. What brings you to this place, Padawan? I felt called here, Master. I don't know by what, or for what reason, but I felt like I had to. But I'm scared, and I don't know why. Normal it is to be afraid. Control it, Jedi must. Not allow it to turn into fear then hatred. To the dark side, these emotions will lead. What is that? Pointing to the cave. That place is strong with the dark side of the force. Oh, domain of evil it is. In you must go. What's in there? Ahsoka asks. Only what you take with you. As she walks in there, there is nothing at first. As she begins to be even more afraid, so she stops and begins to meditate. As she finishes, she stands up, and in front of her she sees Anakin Skywalker, or Vader, killing the good part of himself, fully consumed with hatred, greed, and power. No, that's not true. That's impossible. There's still good in him. I can feel it. I can't give up on him yet. As he says, Anakin Skywalker is dead. I destroyed him. Then I will avenge his death, as Zerka cuts his head off. She realizes that it was Anakin's head, not the evil Vader, the good Anakin, and she realizes that there's hope for him yet. As she comes out of the cave, she sees Qui-Gon Jinn with Yoda, but he was blue and still as young as when he had supposedly died. Master Qui-Gon Jinn, how, how are you here? I am not really here. I am a false ghost. The feeling that you had to come to Dagobah, and then coming to this cave, it was me through the force trying to guide you all along. So you're not dead? Yes and no. As you know, when someone dies, their life essence goes into the force. I have learned to manifest myself through it, as Master Yoda has mm, taught me Master Qui-Gon has. But I can only manifest myself in places that are filled with the force. That is why I was only a voice or a feeling in the ship. And how I'm standing in front of you now. Master Yoda, you must come with me. I'm trying to train the next generation of Jedi so that we can rebuild the Jedi Order. And did the Republic has. Not only Jedi will we be protectors of peace and justice, 
we will not be puppets for the Senate. So you'll join me? Hmm. Join you? I will. So Yoda goes back, and they train for the years to come, and become filled with the living force, as Yoda was, and as Vader was filled with hate. He didn't have his wife, he had lost Rex and Ahsoka, but he had his children, which were the only thing he truly loved that he had left. Vader wanted power, he wanted control, so he built another more powerful Death Star and made even bigger and powerful Star Destroyers, training his children with all that he knew, and Maul training the Inquisitors to be even stronger. He controlled all of the inner and mid rim and most of the outer rim, but he wanted more, so he went fully power hungry, destroying planets or lying with them and forcing some into forced servitude. He was in control of every known power in the galaxy. Every clan of the Mandalorians bowed to him. He controlled all the Crime Syndicates, the Crimson Dawn, Black Sun, the Crimor Syndicate, the Hut Clan, and the Pike Syndicate. He also was allied with the Chiss and the Night Sisters, so he can do whatever he pleased, and nothing could stop him. And he has everything he could ever want, and he was the Emperor of the entire galaxy. But no, he still wanted more. He wanted her. He wanted Pat. He wanted his wife back, so he studied and researched and read and read and read and traveled across the galaxy learning about what he could do to resurrect her, to bring the best part of him back, Padme, his wife. As Leia, Luke, the Inquisitors, and Maul took care of all the Jedi, Vader poured all that was needed to find out how to save her and how to bring her back. But what he ignored when he was younger is other powers exist besides the Jedi and the Sith. He tried alchemy. He tried Night Sister magic. He tried everything he could think of. He was growing angry and impatient and more and more insane. But he knew, he just knew that he would find a way. He loved her. He couldn't let her go. He couldn't do that to his kids, but most of all to himself. When he finally returned to Mandalore, he broke down in tears. The most powerful person in the galaxy crying. The only thing that he could do now was find out what was out there that could help him, so he continued to read through ancient Sith writings. As Vader researched and learning everything he needed from the ancient Sith writings, he went to his ship and traveled to the planet of Mustafar. It was just as unpleasant as he had remembered. The heat was unbearable. As he goes back to the place of his victory over Obi-Wan, as he remembered what happened, he didn't have any remorse for killing Palpatine. For he had read that Palpatine wanted him for his power and didn't really care for him or Padme. But for Obi-Wan, Vader did care. He cared for him and wished he were still here. And for Qui-Gon Jinn, his first master. His eyes turned to normal, no longer Sith, as a singular tear fell down his face. As he remembered his former masters, as his red eyes returned, he remembers why he was there. For in the ancient Sith writings, it told him of a special ancient artifact on this planet that he could maybe resurrect everyone he loves but when he got there he realized he needed some type of key to unlock it so he went to the mustafarians to ask what was needed to open it but they wouldn't tell him because they were scared on what it would do to the planet for it was the aeon engine which is the name of the ancient artifact vader needed the key for it destroyed the planet in the first place turning it from a once very luscious planet to a volcanic hellscape but vader threatened them saying he would destroy them himself if they did not give him the crystal. So one of them said, Only if you promise to use it to restore our planet after you are finished. Vader told him that all he needed was the stone. For one use, then they could use it however they wished. So they told him that the artifact was with the descendant of the Corvaxes. For it could only be used by a descendant of the Corvax family. So Vader asked, Is there any other rules I should know? When you return, we can teach you. So where is this Corvax? He is on the planet of Kashyyyk, for he loves the grassy landscape and huge trees. He loves nature. You see, you'll find him there, on the beach. As Vader thanks them and leaves, he actually feels good for the first time in a long time. As he goes to Kashyyyk, he finds this man quite easily. He was a force user, making him easy to feel through the force. He was showing off to the Wookiees. As Vader walks up, they turn to look at him as they ask, Who are you? As he says, a master of the force, I have come for you, if you will come with me. As he responds, why would I come with you? Because you need me, 
and I need you. You need me for what exactly? I need you to open the Aeon engine for me so that I can save the woman I love. In return, I will train you with everything there is to train you with. Deal. As Vader and him leave, he says, first, before I do anything, you show me what you know of the Force. So Vader shows off his abilities, everything he knows, starting from the basics and moving to more and more advanced stuff, like creating a force field and manipulating weather on huge objects, as he shows him the immense library full of knowledge. As this man is satisfied, he says, I am now your apprentice. I shall obey your orders, master. As they leave to return to Mustafar, Vader is ready, so he returns to the Mustafarians to get more advice, and they let them know the rest of the rules. As Vader, through the Force, calls his legion of Inquisitors and Maul to guard him, and called for his son, Luke, and his daughter, Leia, so that they may meet their mother. Ahsoka feels something in the Force, calling to her, but this time it wasn't Qui-Gon or the cave. It was an old feeling. It was Anakin. She felt like he needed her. She had been having visions of Anakin and thought it was just her mind playing tricks on her, but this felt real. This felt like Anakin was in trouble and needed her. He was calling people to him, but was she supposed to go? She didn't know. So she went to Yoda as he said, How did I have? I'll call it. But from who? I don't know. Who. Anakin Skywalker, or now known as Emperor Vader. Sure you are? Yes, Master. Then go, we must. To save him, we need to save him. He's the chosen one after all. Maybe saving him will lead to his demise, or maybe his death leads to him being saved. Either way, stopped, he needs to be. Leave at once, we shall. Yes, Master. As they begin to leave, Ahsoka talks to Rex specifically and tells him not to kill Anakin and to reason with him if he gets the chance to bring him back to the light. As Rex says, I haven't given up on him. Neither have I. We will save him from himself. As they arrive on Mustafar, they land far away as to not get spotted by the Empire. As they land, they get a look around. Over a dozen Sith stand before them and over a dozen Jedi stand with them. It would be a legendary duel. A duel that would be known through the cosmos, a tale to be told from generation to generation, a glorious day for whoever would come out victorious. As Yoda says, the Force is our ally, and a powerful one it is. Remember this, and what we have taught you. As Ahsoka says, may the Force be with us all, as they march up with no fear in their eyes, as they were ready, the Force was with them. As the Sith turned, they saw the Jedi approaching as Maul said, Master, the Jedi are here. Destroy them. As you wish, Master. As Maul leads the Inquisitors, Luke and Leia stay with Vader and his new apprentice as he tries to open the Aeon engine. As both the Sith and Jedi charge, Maul charges directly to Ahsoka and says, I told you this would happen, but did you listen? No, you didn't, you foolish Jedi. Now you will die. As her duel begins, Ahsoka realized that Maul was not fully focused on her, but was looking for someone else. He was angry that he could not find this other person. As Ahsoka ends for his leg, it is blocked as Maul pushes her back with force as to begin to choke her as he says, Where is Kenobi? While struggling to breathe, she says, He, he is dead. Liar, where is Kenobi? He was uh, killed by your master. What? As he releases her, she says while breathing heavily, He was killed by Vader on Musafar many years ago, the day he became Emperor. He also killed Darth Sidious, the one you said was behind everything. Then he is my enemy. I will have revenge on him. As Maul turns around, he runs after Vader with his lightsaber drawn as he uses the force to push Leia and Luke out of the way. He goes to kill Vader when he is lifted off the ground and he is frozen. As Vader says, you are foolish to attack me, for my power greatly exceeds your own, and for this you will die. As Vader ignites his lightsaber and stabs him in the chest as he throws Maul to the ground. As Luke and Leia get back in position, for they did not expect Maul to attack them, Vader tells Luke and Leia to join the fight, for without Maul, the Quisengers are not strong enough. As the Aeon engine opens and Vader sees the spirits, 
and calls for Padme. As the battle rages on, the Inquisitors are all but defeated, with the Jedi having lost most of their own, as Yoda and Ahsoka fight Leia and Luke as they push them closer and closer to Vader. As Padme appears, as Vader says, Padme, I've missed you. I've tried so many things to get you back, but now you're finally here. I love you so much. As she says, what have you done with Anakin Skywalker? Where is he? I'm right here. Would you not remember me, Padme, my wife? You look like him, but you are not him. You are a murderer. Anakin was not. You call order what is dominion and force people to join you out of terror, not of true respect. You are evil, Anakin is not. As Vader falls to his knees, he begins to weep. He remembers right before she died. She said the same thing, that she didn't know him anymore. But had he really changed that much? Was he as bad as she says? As he wept, he remembered his old life with the Jedi Order, when he was happy and compared it to him now. No, no he wasn't, but she said that he was. As Ahsoka is getting attacked by Leia, she screams to Vader and says, Anakin, Anakin, I know you're still there. Stop this, stop this madness. As Vader remembers his past and sees Order 66, and sees him killing Obi-Wan, his domination over the planet, subjugating everyone under his rule. As he looks up and sees his kids, his children, murdering his friends, and realizes what he has become. He has become a monster, a murderer. As he screams, STOP! As he freezes time around him, as his tear-filled eyes turn from Vader's red to Anakin's blue. As he looks to Padme and says, you were right about me. Go, leave. I am broken. I do not deserve you. As Padme says, there is my Annie, my husband. Look how old you are. As she begins to laugh, a smile comes across Anakin's face as he hugs her for the first time. As a shockwave is sent all around them, throwing everyone away, and resuming time, as everyone turns to look, they see not Vader, but Anakin Skywalker with his wife Padme. As he tells his kids to come, they too lose their red color, for the love that they see is more powerful than the dark in their hearts. As they too are freed from the hold of the dark side. As Yoda, Rex, and Ahsoka walk up to them, Yoda says, True, the prophecy was. The chosen one, you are. Ahsoka says, I never gave up on you. As Rex says, welcome back, Commander. As Anakin embraces Ahsoka and says, you were right about me. Thank you. As he hugs Rex and says, Rex, thanks for always being there for me, through thick and thin. As he turns to Padme and says, thank you for saving me and showing me the light I didn't know I had. As Anakin gives back the key and the Mustafarians cleanse their home, Anakin embraces his family and forces a hold. They train the new Jedi Order with the descendant of Korvax and the other remaining Force sensitives. Anakin tried to fix what he had done, letting go of his dominion over all the worlds, while still trying to help and govern the worlds. It was hard, but Anakin knew they could do it. He had lost a lot of power and control, but most importantly, he had gained his family. But something was in the shadows, keeping watch, waiting when to strike, knowing the time was soon planning, scheming, inching their way closer to their grand plan. Soon, yes, very soon, they would rule the galaxy, and they would be worshipped. Five years later, as he is talking with Padme, Anakin got a call by Grand Admiral Thrawn, for it was an emergency. There was an alarm blaring in the Star Destroyer. As Anakin gets back to the command deck, Thrawn says, There was a breach in our defense. Most of our ships were destroyed from supernova. As another officer runs in saying, We track ships coming from out of hyperspace. They are massive, and there are over a dozen of them. Anakin says, Get us out of here. As the ships come out of hyperspace, Anakin stared, but he could not recognize these vessels. They were similar to Star Destroyers. They seemed like they have been created with Star Destroyers in mind. As they began to fire at them, sending multitudes of lasers, as Anakin's ship scrambled to escape, they jump into hyperspace, but not without their engines being damaged. So after they got out of hyperspace, they were stuck and called for assistance. 
As a multitude of destroyers came, they transported the leaders and fixed the ship, as Anakin lands on Mandalore, his base of operations. He goes into his library to find out who those ships were from. The only thing they found was some of the Empire's first, less complicated Star Destroyers that they had scrapped for being too weak. So Anakin called a meeting between the leaders of the formerly called Empire, now Republic, and tells them of his discovery. As Luke says, Are you saying that Emperor Palpatine is still alive and has come back to kill us? No, I'm not saying that, but it is a possibility. And if it is true, we will be ready, but he couldn't have done it alone. As Ron says, You're correct. He had hope. From who? said Luke. The Empire doesn't have forces in the Outer Rim, and the Republic would never help him. The Anakin said, Their ships. When they came out of hyperspace, I examined them for a few seconds, and they seemed to have been made with the Star Destroyers in mind. As Thrawn said, These ships were much older. These ships were the idea behind the ships of the Republic and Star Destroyers. They are from the Sith, but not the ideal, the species. I've read about them. They are very powerful species, and very hostile. So if Palpatine is leading them, they are more dangerous than we could ever imagine. As Anakin replied, saying, I too have read about the Sith. There is no doubt about Palpatine leading them, for I have read of a force ability known simply as Supernova, where someone or a group of people with enough power in the force could rip the core right out of a star creating a supernova, using Sith crystals. As Leia said, Which is what happened to our ships in the Outer Rim. When Padme said, Then their base must be somewhat near the Felucia system. Yes it is, it's Moor Band. It is also known as Core Band, the home of the Sith species, which is near the Felucia system. As Leia said, So what's our plan, Father? Thrawn and I will discuss the plan, but be ready for anything. As Luke and Leia says, Yes, yes sir. sir. Leaving soon thereafter, as Thrawn and Anakin talked, they decided to wait for the Sith assault, for Thrawn knew all of Palpatine's strategies. He focused on countering them as Anakin trained all of the Force Sensitives and told them about Palpatine's abilities in the Force and teaching them to balance themselves for Palpatine was a sinister and master manipulator. Now the Republic was ready for anything, or so they thought, because the Sith had a plan and had a secret weapon, something that the Jedi would never expect, a mind so big, so different, abilities and ideas that were extremely powerful. This man was known as Darth Plagueis, the master of Palpatine. He had some tricks up his sleeve, and the Jedi didn't expect him, so they had advantage. As Plagueis says, You were bashful in revealing ourselves to the Jedi. As Palpatine said, Master, we are ready to destroy the Jedi, and create a new order, the final order of the Sith, and we will rule it forever, nothing will stop us. That may be true, but don't underestimate anyone especially your enemy. But the Jedi are dumb. Their love and compassion makes them weak. They are blind and stupid, but indeed are very powerful. And because of this, we won't need to proceed with caution. Yes, my master. But for you, my apprentice, you are smarter than almost anyone in the galaxy. You are even more powerful than that, but your overconfidence is your weakness something that the Jedi might use to their advantage, for our plan is not completed. As a year passed, and there was nothing heard from the Sith, Anakin was talking to Thrawn and said, We must attack. I know that it might be a trap, but we must take that chance. I cannot live my life knowing that my old master is still alive and knowing what he is capable of. Yes, but maybe we could wait. Why, why wait? Why not now, Grand Admiral? Because we need time to strategize to plan our attack. Make them quick, for we have limited time. As Anakin leaves, Thrawn begins on the plans, but then stops as he turns on his communication and says, They are going to attack, and soon. And Anakin has suspicion of me. What should I do, my Emperor? Slow their arrival, and do whatever it takes to sabotage and ensure our victory. Yes, I will not fail you, Emperor. As Anakin goes into the library to study up on the Sith species and Palpatine, he finds his family in there and tells them of what Thrawn had said. And Pape said, This is one of Palpatine's favorite strategies, having a spy in the enemy hierarchy. So Luke says, Let me go kill him right now, as he ignites his lightsaber. No. As Anakin holds him back, he continues saying, We can use this to our advantage, by using him to tell misinformation to the Emperor 
to ensure that we have the advantage. The next day, Anakin returns to Thrawn. What's our plan, Grand Admiral? As Thrawn starts to tell his plan, Anakin uses the Force to turn on a voice recorder hidden in the room. When Thrawn finishes, Anakin takes that recorder. As Anakin left, he told the plan to all of the commanders, telling them his plan, not Thrawn's plan, because of Thrawn's betrayal. For that morning, a really small droid had caught Thrawn talking to the Emperor, and he wasn't sure if there were more traitors. As they leave, the Skywalker family stayed with Thrawn in the capital ship to make sure they could keep an eye on him. As they approached the planet of Moorband, the battle began immediately, with them jumping right behind the Sith ships, so before they knew what hit them, they had taken on multiple of the main ships, closing in on the west. When the main capital ship came around, it was huge, triple the size of the biggest ship that Anakin had ever seen, and they inspected it. They realized it was barely fortified, it was very fast for its size because of it. As Anakin, Leia, and Luke, with the rest of the Force users, including Ahsoka and Yoda, and the descendant of Korvax, are about to go down to the surface, they first put Thrawn in a cell by himself, without his communication device as Padme takes control of the fleets. Immediately after they land, the Sith attack them using their powers in the Force and magic, but it was insignificant compared to the power of the Skywalkers. As Ahsoka says, go ahead, we will take care of the rest of them. As the Skywalkers easily made their way to the base of the Sith, using their Force powers pushing them away, as Anakin says, Palpatine, show yourself. As Palpatine walks out, he begins to speak, but Anakin immediately throws his lightsaber, stabbing him through the heart, killing him. But another Palpatine comes out, and another, and another, until there are a horde of Palpatines. As they begin to use Force Lightning, blasting the Jedi and pushing them back slightly. As they send a wave of Force Lightning back at them, disintegrating a few of them, and others igniting their lightsabers and charging them. But these were not a problem for the Jedi, for they were slow and weak in the Force. As Leia takes out the last one, as a hologram appears, it was Darth Plagueis. As Luke says, Who is that, Dad? My son, that is Darth Plagueis. Palpatine's master, said to have been killed by Palpatine, but obviously not. As Plagueis says, He did not deceive you, for he had thought I had died. But little did he know I had learned how to have eternal life. As the hologram flickers, it changes to Palpatine, and he says, My apprentice, Darth Vader, have you come to destroy me? As Palpatine laughs, <laughs> he continues saying, Foolish Jedi, you are predictable, and you will die. As they hear screaming outside, as they run, they see that they had already defeated the Sith army, but a star, with its core slowly being ripped out, as Anakin screams for everyone to concentrate on the star's explosion to stop it. As they all begin to concentrate, they start to push back the core. Palpatine and Plagueis are confused, but continue to rip out the core, and they are too strong for the Jedi, with the Sith Crystals. So Padme realizing what is happening, as she begins to fire at the ship to destroy it, but it is blocked, for there was a force barrier Plagueis had made to defend the ship. It was impenetrable by any blaster from any known ship, as Padme kept on firing as the Jedi were struggling to hold the core back. With more and more of the Jedi fainting from the strain of the Force, as Plagueis and Palpatine felt more and more powerful as it began to speed up and the explosion widened. As Padme looked down at Morban, to Anakin, and to her kids, as she whispered, I love you all so much. As she turns the ship towards Palpatine's and turns the engine all the way up, as she blasts the ship with everything that she has as she goes full speed into Palpatine's ship. As it breaks through the shield, and with its only defense gone, she runs straight into it. As Anakin is focusing on the star, he opens his eyes to see Padme's ship going straight for Palpatine's. As they explode, Anakin holds his urge to fall in tears. He then contains the blast of the star's explosion, and then he falls to his knees. As he begins to weep, as Luke and Leia do the same. He looks up and sees Padme in the Force and says, I love you, as she says, I love you too, as she fades away, as Anakin weeps, happy that they had won, but sad that he had lost his wife. One week later, Anakin with his family had a funeral for Padme, as the Republic began to thrive with peace here and here to stay. Or so they thought. For Darth Plagueis and Palpatine were alive and well, for each of them had transferred their essence into a perfect clone replica. As Palpatine says, 
the war has just begun. The Jedi are doomed. For when we reveal our true strength to the Republic, they will crumble under the power of the dark side, and we will rule the galaxy. As Darth Plagueis said, Be careful not to be blinded by your lust for power, my young apprentice. For they passed our test, and are a formidable opponent, that we should not underestimate. As Thrawn walks in, he bows and says, We are ready. What is your orders, Emperor? As the funeral had just ended, Luke said to Anakin, At least she died so that we can have peace. Yes, my son. She did. And we will always remember her bravery in defeating the Sith. Right as he finished speaking, a multitude of Sith ships jumped out of hyperspace. They began bombarding the planet of Mandalore as they send down their army, as the Mandalorians sound the alarm, as Anakin sent a message to the Republic, but there was no response. As Anakin says, impossible. Luke, it's just us now. We need to find your sister. They find her fairly quickly, but she was injured, as the Mandalorians and the Jedi evacuate the planet, barely escaping the Sith on their way out. As Anakin tells them to head to Mustafar, he has a plan. As the Mandalorians land, with only about a hundred of them, and the only Jedi being the Skywalkers and Master Yoda, for Ahsoka had not made it. As Captain Reich says, Welcome back, I've missed you. As they embrace each other, Anakin says, We have lost many, and the Sith have taken over the Republic. I need to use it. As Reich says, But you promised you wouldn't. I know, but they will perish if I don't. All of us will. As Anakin walks up with the descent of Corvax, he says we need to do this, and do this fast. As the Sith ships jump out of hyperspace, they don't begin to shoot as they begin to land their ships, and an army approaches the Jedi. As Plagueis and Palpatine and their Sith army drew near to the Jedi, Anakin tries to get the door open, but it doesn't work. As Rex runs back and says, It can only work once. It cannot be used a second time. I'm sorry. As Anakin turns to look at the incoming Sith army, as he looks to his left and sees all of his friends, Yoda and Rex, he looks to his right and sees his family, Luke, Leia. Anakin, seeing what was ahead, says, Everything we have ever done leads to this moment. People died so that we can have a chance. My wife sacrificed herself to defeat them. And now it is our turn to fight. And to fight hard. For what you believe. For what you hold on to. Your friends. Your family. That is why we fight. We fight for the person next to us. We fight for the person systems away. That they will have a better tomorrow. We cannot let the Sith win. We cannot let them win. For we are Jedi. For we are the protectors of the peace. For we are the balance. For we are the symbols of hope. As he looks to Leia and Luke, he continues saying, We each know our mission. This is the fight of our lives. And we will win whatever it takes. So let's give those people hope. As the Sith close in, the Jedi charge, filled with the Force, with hope, with the focus on cleansing the galaxy from these monsters. As the battle begins, the Jedi and Mandalorians tear through most of the Sith. Some of them being more gifted in the Force than others, but the Jedi were determined to be victorious. They fight with sharpness, rarely seen by any Force user, and they were of one mind, like one person was controlling them, as the Sith Horde charge, commanded by Palpatine and Plagueis. They wait, and soon enough the Jedi defeat the Sith, but would not without losing a few of the Jedi and all of the Mineral Ornaments. As Palpatine begins to laugh, he says, there is so few of you left. Ahsoka Tano is nowhere to be found. I remember her from the Jedi Order. She was your paddle, was she not? As Anakin stands his ground, listening intently to what Palpatine says, knowing this was some type of strategy to get the upper hand on them. I remember when the Jedi cast her out of the Order and tried to bring her back, but it was too late. She had seen the corruptness of their precious Jedi Order, that they were as blind as they were stupid, and as weak as both. And now, my young apprentice, you will die just as she has. 
as Palpatine begins firing lightning at him as Anakin tries to hold it back as Plague is using a force push throwing Anakin back, knocking him out. As he wakes, he sees Yoda dueling Sidious and Plagueis, who had just killed the descendant of Corvax, leaving only the two of them remaining. As Anakin gets up, he goes to help Yoda and pushes Palpatine back. As Plagueis says, You will die. As he turns to look at Anakin and continues saying, Both of you, and we will control the galaxy. As Yoda says, Demented, your mind is sick with the dark side. The power of the dark side. Force is an illness no true Sith would wish to be cured of. As Anakin says, You do not follow the Force. As Plagueis answers him, saying, The actions of a true Sith begin from the self and flow outward. We stalk the Force like hunters rather than surrender to its cryptic and unstable ways as the Jedi foolishly do. As Palpatine steps forward and says, Foolish Jedi, you never learn. Now you will experience the full power of the dark side. As they all charge in and lock blades, Yoda with Plagueis and Palpatine with Anakin. You will die, my former apprentice. You will die. As they continue fighting, Anakin goes for a stab, a move Palpatine is all too familiar with. As it is blocked by Palpatine, he sends a small force push, making Anakin wobble, giving him the time to slice across his chest. But luckily for Anakin, it was not fatal and just barely skimmed him, for he had jumped out of the way. As Yoda is jumping around in all directions, which makes him very hard to hit, as Plagueis is almost like a statue besides his lightsaber, which was placed with almost perfect precision and moves swiftly. As Anakin then uses a perfectly timed dodge and rolls over to Plagueis and Yoda as he stabs Plagueis in the back, but not before Palpatine had killed Yoda. And with a sinister look on his face, Palpatine laughed as both of their masters fell to the ground. Now there is nothing for you, no one to care for, no one to die for. Join me and together we can rule the galaxy. I will never join you, for I am a Jedi, a protector of the Force, and of the people of this galaxy. There is nothing you can do to stop us. There is no help for you. You are a lone Jedi. You fight for pride, not for a better life for the people of this galaxy. Your precious Jedi religion is doomed, thanks to me and my master. As Anakin begins to laugh, as a ship comes down from the clouds and lands, it opens to see Luke and Leia, with Rex and Grand Admiral Thrawn walking out. For a couple hours earlier, Leia and Luke left right before the Jedi attacked the Sith army, and they brought Rex with them. They went to Grand Animal Thrawn, for he was a Republic spy and was loyal to only the Republic. With Thrawn's help, they destroyed the Sith army and found out where Palpatine and Plagueis' clone facility was, destroying it. As well as coming back just in time. For Anakin and Yoda had stalled as long as they could for Leia and Luke to return. As they look around, Force ghosts start appearing. As Qui-Gon appears, he says, You are the Chosen One. You are the balance. As he smiles at Anakin, as Mace appears and says, You are the Chosen One. The prophecy is true. As Obi-Wan appears, Yes, you are more powerful and wiser than any that has ever lived. As Ahsoka appears and says, Go get him, Sky Guy. As Yoda then appears, The Chosen One, you are. Fulfill the prophecy, you will. As they all say, May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you. The Force with you, it shall. May the force be with you. As Anakin strains his face in focus and says to Palpatine, Incorrect. I'm not alone. And we are not just Jedi. We are family. And your master is no more. No more clones. No more army. No more tricks. You are alone. You've lost. Surrender now. Never. As he unleashes a full storm and sends waves of lightning at Anakin. As Luke and Leia begin to help block it, as they move up simultaneously, getting closer and closer to Palpatine with each step. As Palpatine looks with shock, he ignites both of his lightsabers, but it was too late. He was dead. As Anakin had thrown his lightsaber at him, killing him once and for all. As the Force Ghosts all looked at the heroes and smiled as they faded away. 
Anakin, Luke, and Leia hugged each other, happy it was over. And this time, it was for real. As they have a memorial service for all their fallen comrades, including Ahsoka and Yoda, they have a party celebrating their victory. That's the end. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed making this one. It was a blast. And if you like what ifs, since you made it to the end of the video, check out this one. It's what if Troy Savioth trained Anakin Scout. It's a banger. Trust me. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.